welcome to our discussion for today today we are looking at is oral sex sinful is oral sex sinful there are two views on this topic there's one group that are saying that oral sex is sinful and another group they are also saying that oral sex is not sinful and then you can practice it so we are going to look at uh, where to stand in this you know a controversy now you shouldn't forget that um sex okay should be more exciting so if you read from songs of solomon um chapter 2 verse 6 let's hear the word of god it says let his left hand be under my head and his right hand embrace me okay, so um he's describing a position and with this position what we can deduce from it is that when you look at um the the, the hebrew word used there okay that is uh, embrace me this embrace um means to founder okay or stimulate with gentle stroking to founder or stimulate with gentle stroking that's how so from this position we can see that when we are making love or in in the excitement mode that is love i mean foreplay you can kiss the lips of your partner the neck the breast uh, the right hand and then still be playing with the genitals now the question comes in can i use my tongue you know to lick the penis of my husband can i use my tongue to lick the vagina of my wife such a very controversial issue, issue to to handle because one the bible there's not nowhere in the bible that says that thou shall not leak your wife's vagina and there's an, another thing that shall not leak your husband's penis so it becomes very difficult but let's look at what one prolific writer called nancy van Pelt has to say on this issue this is what she has to say she's saying that a couple uh, might wish might wish no to include what we call oral sex or licking if both enjoy it and find it pleasant this this is what she continues to say however if either partner has an hesitance hesitance about it it should be discontinued yeah and then she continues also to say in her book highly effective marriage she puts it in this way that if you don't like oral sex there are plenty of other pleasurable things she puts this in that way and then she continues to also say that medically the practice is generally safe unless there are infectious genital diseases yeah so on this point we can look at the issue from the medical point of view the medical point of view that if your partner let's say the man is having you know a genital disease you can easily contract it if the, the man so if the man is having you'll get it if the woman is having you'll get it so in other words if the two are having and the other lick the other they will get this genital disease yeah so and she also continued in her book that there is no clear biblical directives although some verses in the Psalms of solomon seem to suggest leaking or oasis the levitical law which give explicit sexual forbidding uh, prohib prohibition or yeah to prohibit i mean to forbid it does not mention it Okay, so there are in the Bible, in the Levitical books, there are so many restrictions that God gives that 
don't do this, don't do that, don't do that consensus. But for leaking, there is no biblical stand on it. So it becomes very difficult to condemn or to endorse. It says that she continues that a couple should engage in love, play, and both enjoy. Usually, the husband is the more willing to initiate a greater variety of love making processes. She continues, but he should not force this upon an unwilling partner. So, what Nathan Babette is advising us is that if your partner is not ready for leaking, please and please don't force it on him or her. Because if you do that, you know, you are making the person uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. So, the issue of leaking it is very dicey. I will leave it here. And then, we will continue in that time. God be with you. Have a good day. Shalom.